Thanks, Felicia. Happy New Year. Hey, guys. Welcome to our first beading class of 2023. Thanks for being here. Um, we have a really fun class today. It's one that um, I've been playing with, making lots of different versions of, and um, I know that a lot of you have already made this project. I've seen some beautiful posts, and um, wow, you guys, <laughs> that's very cool. So we're off to like a running start for this year, which is really great. Um, I'll talk about some of those variations, but of course, we'll just cover what's in the handout and the basic design first, and we'll go through that a couple times to make sure everybody's uh, everybody's got the basic design down. And then uh, I was going to share some of the other ideas that you guys came up with and posted and a few other little things that I've done here, too. Um, so on the mat, I've got uh, the project and a couple other, you know, little pieces of the project. And then I've got some of the findings, seed beads, and um, I was going to just go over that stuff real quick with you guys. So, um, of course, as always in the handout, we've got all of the materials listed. And so you can find those by either going to the Michaels app or you can type them into the website. We always put the SKU numbers. And this is one of those where you, you really do not have to stick with the colors we used. In the handout, I stuck with the, this is like an AB Capri blue, really pretty with silver using a size 10 check seed bead. And so those are the basics. And then some of the optional things are an embellishment or how to suspend it from the ear wire. It just gives it a little bit of a dangle and some, some wiggle when you're wearing it. If you wanted to put that crystal on there, that one is our six millimeter round. And it comes um, in a Labrador color. It's like a silver um, half coat color. That's in the handout too. Um, but as far as like colors, it's the sky's the limit and, and bead types up here. You can put any kind of little bead you want. So just to you know, play and create as you'd like. Um, and then for findings, um, I'm just using, to finish it up, a jump ring, and I'll be using some eye pins, and I'll be using some ear wires. On this design, I used the fish hook, and then I was going to try out the lever backs today to see, you know, how cool they are. Um, and just to give you one more example, something to think about, is uh, you can put a charm from the bottom. Here's some that I made for um, our John Bead Christmas, and you can highlight, like if you're a, for somebody who sells your work, you can make earring cards that say what they're made with, so people know you've used something special, and then just go ahead and, you know, put those on your, on your shop and see, see how much everyone loves them, because they're just, they're very gorgeous and really fun. Um, and let's see, last but not least, we need, of course, some thread and some needles, and I'm using the usual stuff that I like to use. Um, I did use Frost, which is the white 0 0.006 wildfire. Um, sorry, that says 08. It's a, I used the 6, but that was just what I just grabbed. Um, I did use the Frost here. But you can, um, and today I'm going to use the black color so you can see it. And you can use any color you want. Um, let's see, size 10 beading needle. You can also use a 12. Whatever you've got handy. I think the beads are big enough that... You can get away with a 10 or a 12. I'm using a 10 today. Um, and then the other things you're going to need are some wire working tools. And they're just for the last steps where we're going to put the ear wire on, make a little wrap loop um, on top of our, looks like I just did a little wrap loop at the bottom. And then the top is the eye pin itself, the loop that it comes with. So we'll do that. And that's pretty much it. Um, you'll just need, oh, and I forgot scissors, of course. We'll need those to cut thread. And I also, I'm going to grab, let's see what we put here. I know you guys have seen this a lot, but I always use a pair of chain nose pliers. Usually square nose is good um, to flatten the end of my wildfire before threading my needle. Makes it a little bit easy, a little bit easier. And um, let's see here. Any other questions I missed, please drop them in the chat and uh, Carmi will shout them out. Hey, Danielle. Hey, you, when you're doing all your introduction, you miss all the wonderful hellos um, that I'm actually reading from all our <laughs> regulars. So I definitely wanted to chime in and just say hi to everybody. And I wanted to start you off with two questions. Sure, yeah. One, would you be willing to um, show a measurement of the finished yeah. piece mm -hmm. um, just so someone could see that? And uh, Anne-Marie broke her threader trying to get the wire through the number 10 needle. So any oh, no. tips you have for her? Is that the threader that comes with the, um, that comes with the, the, the pack? I'm yeah, going to so assume. Yes. I, I really only ever used that with Nymo. 
with the wildfire, it will break, it will break your, um, it will break your threader for sure. Um, so the trick that we just showed with the chain nose pliers, flattening that end to get that through your, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just pull that off again and show you when I flattened it, see what it kind of did. It made it like paper and it really has that consistency. And then you just take and uh, thread that needle a lot easier that way. One of the reasons it's so hard to thread um, before you do that is it's a little bit wider. It's a little bit thicker than the eye of the needle, even on a size 10. But if you just do that little trick, it'll help. And of course, if you're using Nymo, the threader works great. It's just the wildfire is a little too strong. So we, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, and then the measurement, uh, measurement. So uh, right here is, this is an inch right here. And here's another half an inch. So we're looking at just the star part it is measured about 1.25 inches, I would say. And then if you wanted to know the whole length of it, so from the top of your ear wire down, it's two and a quarter. Thanks, Danielle. That's perfect for both answers. Cool, thanks. All right, well, I'm just gonna dive in and um, start creating one of these. As far as how much thread to cut, um, it's about 45 inches and that'll be, that'll be more than enough, but this is one of those designs where you're gonna do some reinforcing. So uh, it's good to have that length. And it's um, very similar. A lot of you guys do other bead stitches with me. And so you'll be familiar with terms like right angle weave. This is a variation of right angle weave that uses only three beads. And you guys know I like to reinforce any right angle weave I ever do. It's always gonna have a little bit of an extra um, strength to it. And then it makes it easier to work with if you don't have your, your, your beads moving around while you're stitching. Because it's a kind of like a confidence marker if things lock in place as you're going. So I like to I like to reinforce as I'm working, but um, if you like reinforcing at the end, that's fine too. Just whatever works for you. I'm going to work with all my leftover crystals. I thought it would be fun to do like a multicolor one and it might actually make it easier to see in the design what I started with because let me just walk you really quickly through what we're gonna do. We're gonna build these in little little kernels of three and each subsequent one you know as in writing we, we always share the bead from the previous one so you'll create your first little you know section of three and then you're gonna add another and it's gonna share one of the beads one of the bi cones from your previous one you come along and you do the same thing and it matters where you exit from only because you want to try to keep yourself going in a in a circle so I've indicated in each step where to get your thread headed and what bead to do next. And we'll, we'll do that step by step. We'll go through all that. And you'll do the same thing where you're adding two more beads and each, each time it's sharing the bead from the kernel before until you get to the last one where it's gonna share two beads. And so that step's an important one where you're gonna have to come out and add an 11 or sorry, 10 0 and then go through your bicone. And this is the end. This is a, a finished section. And then the fun part is just embellishing it. And I did a thread path that was the most um, like expeditious for that. So what I was thinking I was gonna try to do, I have a pile of colors next to me. So I was gonna try to work these so that each time I do an ad, it's a new color. We'll see if I see if I can stick to that. It's, it's kind of hard, but <laughs> I was trying to do it earlier and um, it worked out okay. So let's see. So far I've got my blue, I've got some red, I've got a really pretty cyan, or sorry, this is like a hyacinth orange there. I've got some topaz and beautiful tanzanite coming up. But yeah, any colors you want working in a solid color is great. I'm just gonna try to make it fun and make it easier to follow. Okay, so first step, super easy. We're just gonna string in a straight line. Uh, and I forgot to dump out my size 10 check seed beads right here. Okay, so I got a bicone and a size 10. I'm gonna do that three times. Oop. 
I think my needle might be a little bent. There we go. Okay. And so ending with the seed bead and your goal is to have three of each bead on there. So you just want to have a bicone, a seed bead, bicone, seed bead, bicone, seed bead three times. Three of each, sorry. And the tail you want to leave is going to be about seven, five to seven inches. You don't need to do much with it. Just going to weave in. But one thing you could think about when you're deciding how much tail to leave, making it on the longer side versus the shorter side is what you plan to do with your design. If for some reason you think you might want to do something more like knot earrings, like you want to stitch up a bracelet, or if you wanted to suspend a charm like I did in this design here, you may want to give yourself extra tail thread to reinforce your petal an extra time or two, give it some strength. So seven inches is great for that, seven to 10. You'll have enough uh, thread if you've cut the 45 inches. Um, so that's why, that's why the extra is just in case you wanted to have those options. Okay, so I'm gonna come back through these beads. So we strung them. Here's the tail side here, needle side here. This is the working side coming out here, tail side. We're gonna come back around and go through all those beads. I'm gonna see if I can get through in one swoop and if I can, great, and if not, oh, there we go. Okay. And so you'll have it come together like that and do a little section. Go ahead and go back through the first, the first bicum. And from there, tighten everything up by pulling on the tail and the working side. And I'm gonna go through that one more time. And again, I do that just for strength so it doesn't wiggle while I'm working. And one thing to watch for, as you're stitching along, I've had it happen to me a few times where I've missed my seed bead because I get going fast and I just keep going. And then I look back later and I've built the whole thing and I've got, I've got thread passing over my seed bead instead of through it. So, you know, just taking a look at that each step. So if you, if you catch it in the moment, it's easier to fix. So there's that. Um, and now let's take a quick look at the handout. I want to explain what I did. We went around, we reinforced, exited from the same bead that we started. It's got two passes through. What we want to do is go ahead and weave to the next one and put on two beads. So we'll do a tenno, a bicone, tenno, bicone. There always going to be spaced by an extra tenno, but we're going for adding two bicones there and then coming back through. So from here, from here what we're doing is we're coming along and going through that bead and then we're just going to create that shape. So let's switch colors. I'm going to go again, go through here. It's basically just going through the next bead from the one your tail's coming out of. And so here's my new color. I'm going to go to this beautiful hyacinth color. And now you'll need three tenos and just two bicones, because remember, we're going to borrow the bicone from before in the last one. So here we're going to go back through. And you always want to go back through the side that your thread is not exiting from. We come back this way. Pull tight. This is going to be so fun, so pretty when it's done. Reinforce. I'm going to go all around it. Sometimes I can get through all of them at once, and sometimes, sometimes not. And what I just did there was I'm going to exit from the bottom, bottom meaning like, so let's call this the top over here. I'm going to exit from the bottom one. So not this one, but this one from the second one we added. So we're showing that right here. And you'll still, this will still work out even if you don't follow this exact bird path. I've had a few where I was just kind of asleep at the wheel and stitching them and I still got there in the end, but you have to get familiar enough with the structure to know where you are in space and orient yourself again. It So it was the first couple of times you make it, every time you add, go ahead and look. Um, and I'm doing the same thing because I, again, like I start going at autopilot and I don't always stick to it. And then none of the steps will line up after that. It would still work, but you'd have to know what you were 
you know, you'd have to know where you are. So from where we are here, I'm going to add two more. So this is the, just to show you on the last page where, where it was. You're exiting from this one, which is that bead here. And then you're just going to come along and go around. Okay, so let's try a new color. Again, we're going to pick up a 10, size 10. And then let's grab some of the tanzanite. Another 10. Tanzanite and a 10. Okay, so there's those. And let's go through that icon. The one we're exiting, again, we're heading in the opposite direction of that exiting thread. And you'll know you're getting there because it's starting to look like it's headed in a circle, right? So if you get lost or you um, end up exiting from a different bead, just look for that rainbow shape and you know you've got it. And I'm just very quickly going around. Okay, and here's where I am now. I'm exiting again from that bottom one. And uh, it's the second one from what we added. So. so we just did that. We added that one and we're exiting from that bead. All right. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be going in the other direction now. So we're going to go this way now, counterclockwise, and put on two more beads. It's the same thing. The change in direction is because every time you add one, you end up in a different, same, same as with right angle weave, right? You come out of one kernel or section and you're headed right. And then the next time you're headed left. And just keeping track of that is like 90% of it, I think. So here's our next add. Seed bead, by can, seed bead, by can, seed bead. And then there's our bead that we're exiting. Go through it. And there you go. It's working out still. And still, I'm doing that same thing where I'm reinforcing, going around. And let's just take a look right back where we are. Make sure we're exiting from the right one, which is that one there. And our next, our next one is going to head in that direction. So we're headed clockwise again. And this is the last one before we join. So let's grab our size 10. Here's my red color. And so this kind of helps, I feel like, because you can see every time we've added what we're doing. And one more. So there we go. We've got our three on there, right? Three size tens and two bicones. And then coming along. Again, we're going back in the bead in the opposite side from where that thread's coming out. And there we go. How fun would this be? You could really play with, um, once you've got the placement down, you could play with the pattern of the color. Like you can make the inner ring a different color than the outer ring. And you'll see that ring up here when we join here. But there's the, the bicones running along on the inside and the ones on the outside. And you could, you could really make some cool patterns like that. And I know, I know a lot of you guys are already thinking, Hey, I can keep going and make another a third round. Yes, you can. <laughs> and it's very cool. Um, so we'll have to do that again, um, like at this class again, but with more um, more rounds. The only thing is it starts to get really wobbly, but you can build on top of it and strengthen it. But yes, that's a that's a, something very fun that um, someone emailed me about. And yeah, you can absolutely do that. So from from here, from where we are, let's look at the handout, see what we did. We did our clockwise ad, right? We were here and we came around and we reinforced everything. And now we're exiting back from this bead. And why I want to be here is I'm going to come out from this bead, put on a size 10, come out through the speed, and then do a join here with one. 
and that's what you're seeing there. So super fast, super, super breezy. Um, I'm going to use a color that's far away so we know what we're seeing here. Switch back to purple. Um, and so first thing you want to do is you'll want to pick up that size 10 seed bead. And taking a look at where we are, we're exiting from that bead right there. And so you can see the whole thing. It's, it's this bead here. We want to go down through this bead. And that places our circle complete right in the center with seed beads going around. You've got that circle going now. And now we'll need another 10, a bicone, and a 10 -0. And so let's jump over back to that blue, uh, sorry, back to the red bead we were exiting from before. And let's just join it right, right like that. And there it is. That's pretty much it. That's all of the uh, crystal stitching part. So now it's just the fun part, the embellishing. So what I'm going to do now is I very quickly go back through that last connection. I'll go around and make it strong. And there's one more turn. Okay. Going back through that seed bead and I'm going to come back out through this bead here. And now we're going to do the embellishing. So currently, I am exiting from that bicone. And I want to continue on through the size 10 seed bead here. And so from here, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a little petal around the outside of the bicone. I thought nine looked good. Um, but you can use as many or as few as, as you like. And especially if you uh, are using any kind of, um, I know Maria was mentioning four millimeter bicones. Um, so if you wanted to switch down to like a size 10 check and change that up and make it like five size 11, that might be good, but you'll have to play with it. And you might decide even using the same beads I'm using here that you don't like nine, maybe you like eight or maybe. So just try, try it. It might be different also um, with every bead you add. I'm switching colors. Um, reason I'm doing that is so you can see I want to make it clear what beads are here already because when we start adding the petals, it will all blend together very really fast. So you'll be able to see each hat alone easier if I, if I switch that. So I'm going to put on nine, which is what the handouts call in, and show you that. So there's nine seed beads. Uh, again, these are size 10 check. And I'm exiting from this one here. I'm going to jump over my bicone. And go down through this bead here. And I just thought that was a good look. It seemed like it wasn't um, hugging the bicone too much. It wasn't, you know, looking kind of like it was too tight. Because if it's too tight, what you might find happening is it will start to like come up in front of the bead. So this worked for me, but definitely feel free to try different counts and play with that and make sure you like it. Okay. And so from here, what I did was another kind of like a a win-win situation for not seeing the thread very much and another chance to reinforce the center here. So I just did this little rainbow. I'm exiting from that that size 10 check seed bead. And the reason I don't just turn and come up to the next one here, which I mean you could do that if you wanted to, but you're going to see your thread passing between the two and it's going to change the um, orientation of those beads. It's going to make them a little more level with each other, level like that. So if you want to avoid that, you can just follow this kind of neato thread path here. So come down through that bead. And now what I'm going to do is go through the center ring here, just one. I'm going through the tenno that joins my red bead, my next bead. And come up. And then come up through that bicone. And through the next size 10. And I skipped one. And it just made it so that all I have to do is come around here, come around here. And then when you come back down, you work it back in that direction. And it, it goes faster. It uses the least amount of thread. And then you get all of this reinforcing going on. So let's do that really quick. So from here, I need nine more. And you can work them, you know, side by side if you want to. That'll be fine. It's just this path I felt was faster. 
So there's that one. And again, I'm going to just come along through the next size 10. And then up through the next bicum. Nine more. Oops, I forgot to go through my, my tenno. So I'm going to hold these. And try to get through those. Come over this one. Okay, so we have done, we've done that. And from here, we're going to go ahead and finish the other. Same thing, just weaving around. I feel like it kind of tells you where to go. Uh, so from here, I'll come down through that bicone. And go through this one. And another question that um, I was sent in Messenger earlier, someone asked, can I use size 8 in here? I haven't tried it, but as I'm working right now, thinking about it, I'm actually curious to see if it might make these more rounded. I don't know. It was just a thought that um, popped in my head from an, a message I got, and I had, I'd promised I would try it and, um, and let her know. So if you're here, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> um, so there's that. I'm going to do my nine. Here's one, two, three. And then come down through the next one. Down through the bike home. And because of the way we travel through the through the bike homes, that's just why it kind of made sense to me to go in this direction. There's four. Okay, we only have one more to go. Three that size ten. Up through the next bike. And last one. Okay, let's get these nine on here. I'm jumping over. All right. So there's our, our beautiful star flower there. Super cool looking. I did a mix of metals and colors. And I think it's my favorite one so far. There's that one. So all you have left to do at this point is weave it in. And um, weaving it in is kind of the same thing that I like to do is just kind of go through a few a few beads following my existing thread path and then trim. Doing the same thing with my tail and my working thread. But as we mentioned earlier, it kind of matters what you want to do with your design. So what it's going to become. And if it's just going to be earrings like what we're doing, I'm going to focus my reinforcement on one of these petals where I might go through it maybe twice and use that as the one I hang from. And I might use my tail thread to do the same if I'm going to do a charm down here. Another thing to think about is if you're going to do like a bracelet where it's idly linked or even just by itself, uh, case in point is my bracelet today. I went a little crazy reinforcing that side and you can see it's really holding its shape nicely. I think I only made two passes to this one and you can see where it's kind of pulling a little bit more. Still beautiful, but I actually might come back in with some more thread later and give another couple passes to that. Just so you know, it's durable. And so that it holds its shape a little bit differently. And if anyone's curious about like um, how I did the rest of that, it's really easy. I just opened jump ring and attached some chain. And I found this chain um, on the findings wall at Michael's. And these are um, the uh, precious metal clasps, the four, uh, 18 karat gold. So, and I used our, um, eight, our 18 karat gold, five millimeter jump rings there on all those sides. 
So this is like a seriously like blingy, nice gift, like really nice bracelet. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what I was thinking for as far as to like weave in, have that in your mind when you're doing your weave in. It's like, where do I want strength, added strength and use that as an opportunity here to do that. So I'm just gonna decide which one and it's really handy. I've got different colors. Which one's gonna be my top? How about this purple one since it kind of stands out? So again, I'm just traveling here. One minute. Okay, go through all those beads. Every single one, all nine of them and the connectors around here. And another cool thing, so every time you do that, I feel like it makes it look a little more rounded. As the beads get filled up by the thread, they tend to um, not look mishappen. They just look and they're gonna go, they flow in a perfect circle. See the difference between that one and this one? It looks really cool. And so here's my second pass, or sorry, what I guess I guess it's a third pass through. One more here. And as those beads start to get full, they'll resist. Um, as always, try not to just force your needle through it, but use your um, use your needle to kind of push up on the like the wall of the bead from the inside. That'll get you around thicknesses without puncturing your thread. So um, that's what I was doing there, just to kind of make sure that I don't puncture anything, weaken my connection. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do one more trip around this bead here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim it. And then it's just to get a little solid weave in there. Now I'll do the same thing very quickly with the other side and we'll pop an ear wire on there. Okay, so from here, I like to trim it. Let me show you guys what I've been doing. Because thread does tend to wiggle its way out unless you're doing knots, and I didn't really do any knots with this one, but the place where I've been trimming is just after a bicone, because that's the place where it's got the most area to hide. Like if you trim after one of the size tens, it's not, it doesn't have much to stay inside of, right? It could just come back out. And then you'll have a little spit of threads sticking out. So if you trim it after a bicone, you'll have a better chance of it not doing that. So that's what I've been doing on all of mine. I've been taking, taking that last little trip through one of the six millimeter bicones and then trimming right there. So now that, that extra little thread is in there. It's, it's chances of backing itself back out are slimmer than if you're using a 10. Here's another chance to see that trick for threading the needle for, um, and forgive me, I don't remember who asked that, but um, about trying to get your needle threaded. Here's what I'm, I'm flattening that there so that it looks a little bit, almost like a paper thin end. Grab my needle. And it should go right through for you. And I haven't been using um, using it here on classes because it's just kind of hard to get it to fit under under what I'm doing with my cameras. But I do have a magnifier, and I use that sometimes if I feel like I need to, like especially if it's a if it's like one of the eleven O's or something that you're going through, or if you're trying to use a size twelve beading needle. All great opportunities to go ahead and and use those magnifiers. Okay, so I'm going to come down through again. All I'm doing here is just following an existing thread path through my beads to weave in my thread. And I remember now that my opposing, like my top bead, the one that I really went, went to town reinforcing is this purple one here. So maybe I'll try to reinforce this if I can get to it. I think I can.
And I'll just make one trip through. So both my top and my bottom beads have ended up being the tanzanite. And actually, I just realized this is the same bead I reinforced a second ago. I thought I was down here, but I'm, I'm up here. Sorry about that, guys. And I'm going to trim after a bicone. The scissors back. And that thing I was doing, I was, I was pulling up on the on the thread while pushing down with my scissors. Um, that is a really cool trick um, to make your thread uh, even, you know, less likely to pull out of the bead. But there it is, all set. And from here, all you'll need is some jump rings. And if you're doing that cool little crystal drop, maybe some eye pins, and then you'll need some ear wires. And optionally, you can throw charms on there. You can link them. Oh, thanks, Angela. Yeah, and so this is a great time for questions because I'm just gonna open up these jump rings and get the tools going here. So if you've got anything for me. Danielle, at some point um, during the threading process, uh, what if you're going in the wrong direction and you need to get to the bicone? Do you recommend going back and starting over? Oh. No, 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 actually, um, I was when I was talking earlier at the beginning, I was mentioning that could happen very easily. And I kind of described it as maybe getting lost in the stitch path. This is not the only stitch path that can get you there. So for example, if you um if you end up building it and you're in a different spot, you're what'll likely happen to you is you'll get to the end and you'll find yourself here, but going in a, in a different direction than I was going. So I ended up heading toward the center. But if you've built it in a different way, you might find yourself headed out this way, in which case you would need to pick up your 10, bicone 10, come back in here, then add the 10 out from the inside. You would just be going in the opposite direction, depending on what direction you built. And it's really easy to get turned around, but in the end, it doesn't matter as long as you've got that structure going. And once your eyes can see it, you may find yourself kind of like stitching on autopilot and just adding them where you know they go, even if you're not on the same side as you were, or you know what I mean? you'll see. So um, for, for whoever's in that situation, take a look at the diagram and then hold up your piece to it and be like, okay, so where, where is it? You know, if you have any that are off, like for example, if you started building over here or something, yeah, you'll have to go pull that out. But if you're still, if you still got the shape, it doesn't matter what bead you're exiting from as long as you're following the convention of adding another 10 and then your next bike home one 10. I hope that helps. <laughs> Oh, it's Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. I hope that helps. And you can always message me if um, if you get stuck and we can take a look at your piece. Danielle, also, um, yeah. while you have the paper out, Fran mentioned that you have a correction on step three. Oh, yes. I proofread my work and I make one along. This was not the version you have. I'm just saving paper. <laughs> you guys have the version where that's caught. I make these and then I go to sleep. And I get the next day and I make one following my own instructions now to see, and I catch 99% of them. And then Pat catches the others. <laughs> Yay, Pat. <laughs> There's always something that like, you can't read your own work, right? You can't like, we need an editor. That's great news. So the, their copy is perfect. And their your copy perfect, is yeah. your own pencils. Pencil and, marking. You know, I'll start printing out. I'll start printing out a fresh one. I think it was just trying to. No, Danielle. It was actually kind I, of a knit. It was good a knit. that you're was saving like the trees. Knee. Save the trees. You did great. Saving the forest. This one was actually not bad. Like, I think I just, I didn't like that word. So I took a word out. I felt, felt like it was too wordy. I was getting really nitpicky with this one. Um, and I know a lot of you guys have seen this already. I'm just going to zip through adding a pretty crystal in case anyone wants to see that. I feel like a lot of you guys out there are already kind of masters on wire wrapping and stuff, but just so you know, we got to start to finish. Um, idea. And also I wanted to make sure I mentioned that you don't have to do exactly what I did. But I used, I think I just used one jump ring, one six millimeter crystal, you know, per ring, right? And so there's an eye pin. Put that on there. I'm gonna grab some round nose pliers real quick. And anyone not familiar with round nose, round nose are the ones that have like a 
the um, rounded part of the of the plier, it's a circle, right? So it'll be like a perfect circle like this one. I'm not sure if that's coming over, but as opposed to a chain nose plier, uh, which would have a flatter, flatter inside versus a round connection inside, right? Okay, so let's get that on there. I like to face my loop um, at a kind of like a 90 degree angle for myself. So there's there's my loop and I'll face it like that. And I'll take uh, the round as players. So I'll pinch the top there. I'm using the very end because all I'm doing right now is a roll forward. And then I'll turn 90 degrees with the tool and kind of bring the wire up just a smidge. And that will give me the room to slide the tool down a little bit, make my loop a little bigger. Bring that all the way around. Another 90 degree turn. So you get kind of like a little crossing over there. And then what I like to do is take a pair of chinos and hold that in place. And this is a pretty soft one. I can do this with my fingers, but if you needed help bending these around, you could always use another pair of pliers to help you bring it around. So got another chain nose here. And just help you make a loop. And straighten that out. And I'm gonna trim it. So here's some flush cutters. You just wanna trim your tail. And you could also just do a simple loop if you like those better. I think I did a wrapped loop because I like the look of those and it, um, I have more control with controlling my loop size. I wanted to make sure my loop was pretty big whenever I work with those kinds. So it's going to flatten here. Sorry, I went off camera there. All I did there was I flattened down, flattened down the tail. Okay, so there's a Loop. I wanted my loop at the bottom to be a little bigger. That's why I did a, a wrapped loop there, but you do any kind of loop that you like. And ear wires. These are lever backs. Um, so you may be using the fish hooks that I called out in the handout. I dug through and realized I was out of the fish hook ones. So I'm just using a lever back in place of it there. It's going to be the same process, just going to attach it. And um, in both cases, the loops on these uh, findings open with a pair of chain those pliers so you can just attach them but also the way that we did this you could open the loop on your eye pin here at the top so whichever you prefer on just in case anybody's new to this finding i was going to show you that you can open it and i didn't know this for the longest time so i thought i might share this but these open right here and it's really strong So I'm just gonna Danielle, on. will you mind showing the wire wrap one more time? Yeah, sure. Yeah, can you do that? We we have one or two new people today. Great. Okay. Yeah, I kind of breezed through that one because it's a uh, it's shown so much, but I can definitely show show it again. So I'm gonna grab another one of those um, eye pins that I just had out. And again, these are the um, what are they called? This is a 1.5 inch eye pin. They have a really nice loop on them too. And I'm gonna grab another crystal. Again, these are the six millimeter crystals in half coat Labrador. Put those on there. And so lots of different ways you can do loops and a lot of folks have their, you know, their preferred method. Um, so just how I've always kind of done it. I've got the loop kind of maybe perpendicular to myself. And then I just use the very tip of my round nose pliers. And the reason I'm using the very tip is I want the height of my coil to be kind of short. So whatever measurement you determine here, you're determining now the height of your coil, the height of the coil, meaning this part right here. So the part of your, um, your wrap that's going to sit above the bead. And so if you want that to be maybe one or two wraps, three at the most, you want to work with the tip of your round nose pliers. Bend that forward. And now you've just locked that height in. 
So now we're going to make our loop. And so I start my loop by, I just move this, see we were, we were here, and I just move this up 90 degrees. And I'm going to start helping it form that loop, but I want it to be bigger. So now I've just made a little bit of room for my tool to maneuver. So I'm going to slide it down. So I started it at the tip of the pliers because I, I didn't have space for the larger part of the plier, but now I do because I've started my, started my loop coming along and bring it around. And I actually will like cross it as far as I can go on the pliers before making the next adjustment in the position of the pliers. So I got it here. I'm connected all the way around almost. And now I'll do another 90 degree movement. So you're opening up the plier and you're moving at 90 degrees so you can finish your loop. And what it looks like, I'm trying to get under the iPad here with it, but um, it looks like that from the side. And at this point, sometimes you'll see me take and adjust it a little bit back just to center my loop above my bead. So that's what you're going for. Some space. We made that when we did our bend forward and a nice loop on top of it. That's the size you're going for. And a wrap loop is easier to control the size of your loop, in my opinion, than a simple loop. So that's why I like to do the wrapped ones. Um, and now I'm going to switch to chain those pliers. Again, this is just the way that I do it. Not everyone does it this way. Some people do the next part right off the round nose, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just like to have the loop locked in. So I'm making sure it's not moving. And then if you can bend it with your fingers, start making your coil around. If you feel like it's poking your skin or it hurts a little bit, come along, get some other pliers and help it go. Particularly if you're working with a stainless steel, I find it absolutely need pliers. This one is this, uh, this one is sterling silver and it is soft. So I don't really need my pliers to do that but um, I did anyway. And then another thing you can do before you do your trimming is you can just come along and make them face the direction you want. Sometimes you want them both facing forward. Some designs you want the loop with the bottom to be perpendicular. It depends what you're doing charm wise and all that. So um, that's pretty much it. Got my, got my loop done. I just need to trim, trim that tail. So let's come along, get the tail here trimmed. This is flush cutter. A flush cutter has a side that is flat, and then it has a side that is kind of uh, bent down in the center there. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's um, very easy to use. You just come along, use the flat side against where you want to cut, and you'll get a flush, a flush cut. So I'm checking where I'm at. And I'm always worried I'm going to cut my loop, so sometimes what I'll do is bring it out of the same plane so it's not in the same plane as my loop. And now bravely trimming. Okay. It's one of those things that's really easy to do until you're demoing and you're like terrified. Okay. And now I'm just flatten. And you can use regular chain nose. I've been using my bent nose because my bent nose have a very, very fine Yep, on them, but if you don't have bent nose, absolutely chain nose is fine. And I'm just flattening down the tail of that little wire I cut, right? So it's not pokey. And this is all just the style I wanted. This isn't like the way you have to do it, but I wanted a bigger loop on the bottom than the top. And then I grabbed my, let's see where those are, my lever back ear wire. And, oh, wow, I'm always so amazed by how fast our classes go. I need two hours with you guys. So here's that lever back again and opening that up. All right. And so really quickly, I'm going to show for anyone new to jump rings, just real quick, how to do a jump ring. So jump rings have a seam. They have an open seam on them. I'm going to bring that a little closer. And you can see it. Now, our jump rings are so good. They're, they come closed so nicely. Like I sometimes don't even have to adjust them. And it's hard to find the seam, but it is there and you will see it. This is a chain nose plier that has more of a square nose. And I'll use it to hold one side. And I'm locating that seam. The seam is right here at the top. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right there. Now I'm going to get those bent nose pliers back. That's these ones here. 
And then in a lateral motion, you don't want to pull apart. You never want to pull apart your jump ring. You just want to open it, open your loop sideways, just like we were doing with the lever back. It's that kind of twisting motion to get your jump ring open. That preserves the circle shape of it, which is what you want to do. And then just attaching this to here. Grab my star. Oops. And I'll definitely do this with the tool. Um, but what I might do is take off the ear wire if this doesn't go well for me. It's tight. I'm going to take this off and do that after I get it on here. That helped a little bit. Okay, so I still got it open. It's a little tricky to get that on, so I'm kind of glad I showed that. But once it's on there, then get your ear wire. And now let's close it up. And here's another reason I love the bend nose, is you can come along and just really easily get in there. Make sure it's closed. Mine is not closed. There we go. All right. I don't know. Let me look again. <laughs> Seems like it's pretty close. Okay. I'm picky about jump rings and for good reason. You don't want it to pull through. Um, one thing I was thinking as I was working this is you could also just work a wrapped loop directly onto this and that might make sense um for the fact that sometimes like a sometimes jump rings will pull through i haven't had that happen on my earrings they've been fine but if you really wanted to make sure that didn't happen a wrap loop directly onto here would be another way to get around that worry so think about all that when you're creating them i did the jump ring because it gives it so much flow and sway see how it can just move so nicely and of course i'm someone who can just repair it if it comes off right but if you wanted to um, stitch a clothes jump ring onto it when you do your last pedal, there's lots of things you could do. Just um, keep in mind what you um, have as your end state uh, when you're creating it in, in that process. So um, it went way faster than I thought. I did have a bunch of things out that I was gonna show. And I've already seen a bunch of folks post uh, beautiful ways of connecting them. And um, I've also seen stitched versions where there's one flower. Um, I think Maria posted that yesterday or the day before where she has a flower and she did herringbone, single column herringbone from one side into the other. Really an ingenious way of starting it. it was almost like a little brick stitch and then it came out as herringbone. So take a look at her example for another piece of inspiration for how to, you know, just make this into something. I just went super simple, jump ringed it and made a bracelet. You could do that same exact thing, jump ring these together. I would switch um, switch up from the five millimeter, which are these guys, switch up to like a six or even an eight millimeter to join them because you've got to have room to go around all those, all those seed beads. So that's the easiest way. Um, but then you could stitch it, right? You could bring in a new strand into one side, weave around and then start connecting them. I would do almost like a square stitch to two beads to two beads. We've the next one square stitch two to two, same thing here, and then you could work some kind of class, you know, idea going. Maybe a button with a loop, or you could even attach them opposing, so you get like a little design like that. So many cool things you could do. Definitely want to try all those ideas. I wish I had another hour with you guys to go and try them all, but I will. I will do that and I'll post them. Is what I'll do. So made it to ten to twelve. It's a uh, for me, I'm on the Pacific Coast. For me, it's three minutes till it's 12.57. So um, like sailed right in there. <laughs> I always feel like we're threading the needle for time. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, definitely, of um, course, you can find me um, on Instagram at Danielle Wicks Jewelry if you have questions. And then um, if you make beautiful things, <laughs> thanks, Pat, um, definitely post them, tag us. Uh, it's hashtag John Bead. Hashtag make it with Michaels. And uh, we love uh, sharing and promoting your work too. So please share with us what you make and ideas. Always love hearing your ideas because a lot of them will lead me to um, future classes. And case in point, in February, I'm teaching something that was uh, an idea that I also got from Maria. 
um, which was to do kind of like a little, it's my first time showing you guys this. Um, I made it over the holidays and it's just like a little braided design. I'm not really sure what to call it other than five-stranded braid or CB the braid. And then somehow a button evolved from that. So I decided to make this two classes because the button by itself is a class. So the first class in February is a button and then we'll do the bracelet and you'll have a button ready to attach. Um, and I kind of skipped over the rest of January. So going back in time next week, we're doing this really cool right angle weave bracelets. Um, and they are just a really fun design because they have um, a stitch path that's all one, like all one direction. You don't have to like bring in two, um, two needles or anything. And they're fast. They're really fast. You can make stackers. And that's what I did over here. I made a bunch of them in all these different colors. And I use the three packs as my color guides, just kind of create. And then we have a workshop at the end. Not the end of the month. Actually, um, it's the third week. So not next Friday, but the Friday after that, we have a workshop to do um, jump ring chain. This one's really fun, versatile. And I'm going to do a necklace, some kind of cool like necklace design then. Then I'll have something really beautiful to wear in Tucson because we're going to Tucson that following week. So we won't have a class on the um, 27th like we usually would, um, but we'll be back in February with the um, with seed beaded buttons. And so that's coming up on February 10th. And then uh, we have the bracelet on the 17th. And then last but not least, some really fun wire. So we did a little wire today and I was feeling wire um, and I saw these new findings. Let me hold it up really quick. This is gonna be our, um, over here, last class in February. And these are all one hour workshops. We don't have a premium class in February because of the, um, you know, the week off that we had in there. So, but yeah, this is gonna be a really fun one because I get to play with wire and crystal and we don't thread a needle, so. That one, if you're new to wire working, definitely uh, come along and join us for that one. And so, yeah, exactly one o'clock for me. <laughs> um, how are you guys doing? Any questions? Any new, um, anything I missed in the chat? I'm looking now. So. Danielle, you did great. Thanks, Thank you. Thank Lots you. of love for another beautifully organized class and great Thanks. instructions. And um, somebody is letting us know some of our February classes are up, they so are. they can start registering. Thank you so much. I, I didn't check, so I wasn't saying anything because I wasn't sure. So thank you for checking for me. Yeah, so the, some of these are up, so you might already be able to go work ahead like I know you guys will, and you'll have it done by the time like we get back from Tucson. <laughs> we'll be posts and beautiful things. So yeah, thanks so much, you guys. Um, Have a great rest of your Friday and an awesome weekend, and we'll see you next week, next Friday, for our Writing the Weave class. All right, hearts to you guys. <laughs> Bye.